Hello, uh, SOAR community and beyond. Uh, SOAR stands for Sounding Our Authentic Resonance, and I am Jan Jorgensen, and I am right now uh, perched here located at Olympia, Washington in America, because I consider our circle, our group expanded around the world. And the woman I'm interviewing today, I actually met uh, in Rela Chateau of the Divine Feminine Mary Magdalene Mystery. And I'm walking across the Le Labadou parking lot. I still remember the crunching of the rocks under my feet. And this fairy, redheaded, beautiful fairy said, oh, I believe I've been wanting to meet you. Are you Jan? And lovely Anouk Sophia. And from that moment, we began what I call a kindred spirit relationship. And we both fly around doing different projects, assisting and supporting and witnessing and inspiring and activating each other to keep going, especially when things are thick or when there's family issues. We use our tools and we are available for our sisters. And here, uh, part of this interview, it's going to be uh, very natural because I said, Anouk, we just want to see your soul. Women need to see who you are, what makes you tick, what makes you get up in the morning, what excites you. And also, you can go back to your childhood and say, I began feeling about the world because of this. And she has a very fascinating story, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you, you tell it, Anouk, but she makes a, a wild croissant. She's a great visionary. She leads sacred tours to the deepest places in the world, and look at her. She's a, a beautiful divine being. So I'm very thrilled and happy to be able to interview you this morning, and I thought just to hold this sacred space together as sisters and those that are watching Let's all take a breath together. Deep breath as we witness love and honor this leader of the sacred divine feminine, Anouk Sophia. Good morning. <laughs> Tell us where you're at. Where are you? Good morning, Jan. Good morning, Soar community. Good morning, ladies, wherever you are. So I am in Athens, Greece. I have recently moved here from Egypt, from Luxor, Egypt. So yeah, it's big, big new beginnings for so many of us, me, myself and my little dog included. <laughs> Some of you know me and know Lulu travels with me. So here we are just in so many ways as an offering, as a light, as a, as a vessel in this changing times, in this challenging times. Your life has been one yes. of, re of recreation. And I find it so fascinating, uh, your childhood. It's unusual. Would you like to share how sure. you unfolded sure. as a child in Europe? No, I, yes, absolutely. Yes, I don't, I don't share the story very um, openly or publicly because it means, it means so many things to different people, you know, when they put themselves in, in the shoes of a three-year-old. So, Imagine a three-year-old that's taken away from her mother and it's pretty much dragged across the world from South America into the former Yugoslavia, now Croatia. And it's left with, with nuns in a convent. So the three-year-old doesn't really know how far she traveled. She may have an idea, but she doesn't really know how far in the world she's gone. And she doesn't speak the language and she's surrounded by people that she doesn't know. But the other side of that is that I, as the three-year-old, could see and hear this beautiful lady. 
And this beautiful lady was to me, Mother Mary. And I could always go and find her in this alcove in the, um, in the monastery. I don't know if it was the monastery, if it was a part of the church that I don't remember, but it was like a, a side on an alcove. And there I could always find this beautiful woman and this beautiful woman would speak to me in blue. Like there was no words. But it was like a, a blue, it's difficult to describe, it's like a blue dust that I could perceive and that was our conversations and our conversations were always around the world and, and that I didn't want to be in it. <laughs> I didn't want to be in it. <laughs> I often so, say that we are visitors here, Anouk. We're, right. we're here to help. And yeah, the minute we arrived, it didn't feel very comfortable. So amazing that an interdimensional guide came as your experience of being in a Catholic nunnery. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that was, that was the beginning of, well, another beautiful side, you know, it, it, it may look as a dramatic event in a child's life, in my life as a three-year-old. Yes, I wasn't really uh, blocked by um, too many outside influences because it was pretty much, you know, in my own dreams, in my own world with this, with this, um, with this connection. So I never really lost that ability to see beyond, you know, beyond the unseen or, or understanding messages from, from another realm which so many children lose because of, you know, schooling and education and family. And the so, force, yeah, thank you for asking. The it's force, not usually a story. The force is strong with this one. <laughs> That's how they would say that. And it's never left you. So you stayed in Europe. And I know you speak how many languages? Five. Five languages. So I've always seen you as a master baker, a scholar, historical uh, sacred divine feminine um, holder of this holy grail, this font of knowledge. What was your um, educational experience uh, to put you on the, the seat of uh, authority that you hold now uh, as far as uh, traditional education or did you learn it all from interdimensional realms as you went along? That's a good question. I trained as a teacher um, at school, at college, and I was teaching languages to adults. So I was always teaching in some way. Um, I, did, I did a lot of training with sound. I trained with, you know, at, so at some point being a teacher, I got tired of teaching adults. And so I decided that I wanted to teach language to children. I created the system. By then I was living in France. And um, this was the part that's super interesting is that I, I was going through my first divorce. So it was kind of like, you know, one of those horrible divorces. And I was holding these groups of children in southern France and I was teaching them English singing. And the more I sang, the more I realized that they wanted to sing, but they didn't know the words because, you know, they were French speaking. So I started humming the, the, the melody. And then I realized I could hum and bring them back together because it was a lot of like games and running and drama play. And so to get them back together, because it's not like I was all that used to working with a group of children that you know had just left school and they were like super vibrant and I would make them even more, you know, electric. So to bring them back together again in front of me, I would um, hum and, and tone, but I didn't know it was toning then. And they would then join me with their voices and they would all sit down and it would just be this amazing choir of angels in front of me from you know a minute before they were all like bursting around and playing whatever game that I was playing with them to the next minute being this cohesive little group of joyous choir 
And because I was working with them the whole year, the mothers and the teachers would start coming to me and asking me my technique. What was I doing? Because the children were doing better in class. Like they were achieving more. And then there was this one mother that I never forget. She came to me and she, you know, she's a French lady, so she kissed me and she hugged me and she said, thank you for giving me my child back. And I kind of, you know, didn't quite understand. She said, because now through the song, I can communicate with her and she's changed, she's happy. And she was on the autistic spectrum and uh, she became more herself, you know, more, more in tune with, with herself. So that was such a huge turnaround in my life that I then went back to university to study sound. So I did a two year voice therapy, I went back to England and left France, went back to England and studied at, at college. So through sound, I ended up studying with other masters like Fabien Maman. Uh, he, is the, um, he is the one who I, I believe in the early 80s was exploding hella cells, the cancer cells with sound. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can search, it's fascinating. Um, pictures of Killian, Killian photography, mm -hmm. and then how he was exploding the cells with, with sound. So I was able to study with him, which was really fascinating. And then I got to study with Jo Purse in London. She is another expert on voice and overtoning. And she's written the book, uh, I believe it's called the, I think it's called The Magical Spiral. So it's, it's about sacred geometry and the voice. And so, yeah, I guess it, it was a little bit of just curiosity. I think I've always been led by my own, by my own curiosity. And of course, life, life is strained as it's, it's a life, it's a life journey and a life school. Uh, I'm noticing that so many people who don't feel at home here on earth, that, that they, uh, if they allow themselves to be enveloped in music and vibration, they feel safe. Why? Because music is the only thing that doesn't change from heaven to earth. So you brought the children together and you brought them to that unified humming vibrational field of unity. And I'm so glad you said that because it's perfect as a lead into a global project that Anouk has um, designed and is now uh, doing actively the 108 day project. And it's similar to what you did with the children because the ripple effect, the parents all said, what is this? I wanna know what you're drinking, tell me. So tell us about this project because it's so related to the story you just shared. Yes, thank you. Yes, I guess in many ways it is because it is a, a curious project. It's, it's a project about holding empty mind, so no thought for one minute a day altogether, a global synchronized one mind of no thought for 108 days, which is sacred geometry. So yes, it's so much about returning, I feel, to essence, returning to that point of beginning, of stillness, of the potential of the seed where all possibilities are there before it begins its journey into whatever it is that the seed brings. And of course, at a time like this, when there are so many, you know, political sides and, and rules and regulations to abide by and fear because of whatever is going on in the world, there was, I felt that there was so much mind incoherence. And we talk so much about the heart and about being at one with the heart and the Heart Maths Institute has done so much amazing work for, you know, teaching us the electromagnetics of the heart and how we can go into coherence but nobody was talking about the mind and it seemed it seemed natural that we would have a thought and then go into the heart and and have that emotion of 
whatever it is hopefully you know it, it is um gratitude and, and joy and and um something that represents the goodness for all humanity but i thought how could we be in in one coherent mind in agreement if we're all having this different frameworks because you know we're all different and we all come from different backgrounds and and we may see and understand life in different nuances even if we're all you know at at some level what the best for uh for balance and harmony in in this world even the way that we get there you know especially i was living in a muslim country so i could tell that even if we had good intentions our mind or our thoughts would be so different so how could we align even if it was just for one minute how could we agree to uh, be in coherence and this is this is what the project uh, was was heralding if you like a way of us becoming one with one mind and therefore in essence connecting to the one mind the, the universal cosmic mind where perhaps new information is coming in for the new age for the new era for for the aquarian aquarian epoch so yes it, it's very much a curious project we're still in this you know in this sensing what what is feeling like what are we achieving what is what is the creation what are we seeding for future generations and beyond so yeah we're we're i think one third of it one third into the 100 i think we're in day 35 today the mind can be uh, so dominant and i love your picture of let the heart uh, come forth and be the the pervasive energy and so you're having uh no thought for one minute for 108 days and let me tell you how powerful it is um it's an early time for me so i've been watching the alarm and uh, when i do get up and do it it is like a pool that opens from my heart of nothingness that i am just floating in an elated state of complete bliss. And this morning, um, <laughs> I had the alarm set for 8.30 for us, and, and suddenly I woke up and I could feel the one minute calling me saying, Jan, it's the minute. So I laid in bed and I accessed it without a clock. And I got up afterwards and sure enough, and so we're set, resetting and reattuning ourselves to a new order. What do you see? First of all, what was your inspiration to do this? We know it was your higher guidance, but tell us exactly, because other people want to get guidance for their highest, best project. And then tell me how you see in your inner vision, the energetic form on the grid and what the feedback is from the women you're working with yes yeah inspiration what is so, yeah so i i was um i was happy when this whole i don't want to say the word this whole event of 2020 happened and how people were asked to go literally go inside their houses and, and be inside their houses for for an amount of time and the I want to say the invitation that in a way we were we were offered to go within and to have time with the self you know away from the everyday routine and really have time to focus on who am i and what am i doing and and do i love what i do and and so there was this little excitement inside of me when everything started rolling that perhaps this is the big moment where he might just gonna go wait a minute i could be a lot more i could be myself and <laughs> i would love to be doing something else and and why am i doing this job i hate or why am i you know saving money to buy something i don't really want i don't know whatever whatever the personal story may have been that it would have been an opportunity for each and every one of us to just tune into the soul and go i know who i am and i know 
what I want to bring to the world, what I want to express as, as a creative creator, um, part, of, part of the whole. And then I started to realize that it wasn't necessarily going the way I had foreseen. And so I started asking the sky, I started asking my guides, you know, so what will it take for humanity to really be, uh, you know, walking this, this path of joy, this inner, this inner knowing that, you know, I, I have a purpose and I have a mission and I have a vision and I have a heart desire to to create to bring to birth something and um, this this now this 2020 is a very good time for me to be doing this so i started asking the sky my guides what what would it take and you know will it be soon and basically i was getting the no it wasn't going to be soon <laughs> and that you know we would very much still be in this polarity so that it, things would be looking a little bit different different but there would be still a lot of things to happen before there would be really be unity consciousness so then my next question was well what would it take for us to be in unity and a conscious awareness of unity and so that was the simple answer was when we when we could be in one mind for a fraction of a second and the vision I had was um, everyone bringing their lens. So imagine having, you know, a lens and each one bringing like, I bring my lens and it's now clear and I put it here and then somebody else brings their lens in front and then somebody else and somebody else. And now all of these clear lenses, because we had this moment of no thought, we could now see clearly to what the potential would be in the future. Even if, you know, it may take two years, five years, 10 years, it, it's humanity's choice how long it will take. That potentially by clearing what we think we know and allowing for this clear lens to be applied or to be, um, Yes, it's called overimposing, isn't it? One in front of the other. So each becoming this lens and then bringing us all together and seeing the visual, for, the visual and the vision for the future as unity consciousness. So that was the inspiration. And then of course it was like, how would I do that? How would I ask people to be in one mind with no thought uh, for a fraction of a second? So that's how the project came about. It was like, well, let, let me just put it out there and see what people think. and. And um, we decided to not think and to do the one minute, <laughs> to do the one minute of no thought. And, and it's been amazing. And, and I get, because I am the one inspiring the original project, I get to hear from everyone their experiences. And it's amazing, amazing how they are really, uh, coherent like they're feeling and sensing so much the same in terms of there was a lot of the spark of the original conception which apparently science was not able to measure in um, in electrical current how strong the the moment of when the egg and the cell meet there is a spark and that spark a lot of people were seeing, a lot of the people who are um, coming live or, or joining me and joining all of us, because I know you're part of it too, in the project are seeing and sensing that in many ways there is this spark. It's, it's a fraction of a second and it's super powerful and is impacting, let's call it the seed of potential. So whatever it is that is being seeded in this holographic, um, field of consciousness, whether it's a field that already existed that maybe our ancestors created and we are now joining because there is no time and space, uh, or we are creating a new vibration, a new resonant uh, platform field, um, something new is it's coming. It feels like very much 
uh, oh, another, another thing that people are seeing is that uh, the two worlds are merging or more worlds are merging or that there is this, this bridge that is narrowing down and becoming uh, less of a gap. So curious, curious, it gets curiouser and curiouser as, as we discuss and share what we're experiencing. A lot of color, a lot of the, um, the, the purple, the violet flame is being seen. A lot of um, dots, and, dots and stripes, which seems that there are some kind of codes, like some kind of uh, sound or resonant frequency codes that yeah, it's still coming. <laughs> it, it, def it definitely is uh, opening up new vibrational realms. And as you were speaking, um, this experience we both had as children, and, and I'll talk to you later, it, just the similarities of what we women have gone through, feeling marginalized, not understood, too sensitive. We instilled a promise, and, and this was a promise to not for us to abandon earth and go home, but to bring home here. We are bringing the vibration of heaven here and we are burning off the veils so that yes. we can access it and see it and bring it here and ground it to earth. And that's why I'm having this interview to help women know what we are doing is important. We may not have regular jobs, <laughs> but in a, in a sense, this pandemic has been a gift because we can go inward and do what we were born to do and you are doing it and you are a stellar leader and it's so funny this morning i i went out in the forest to take down the hammock and look what t-shirt i wore victorious mm -hmm. rbg head of the supreme court who knew how to use her voice and initiate things as the voice of truth as a leader for more freedom for everyone so i I think you should be nominated to the Supreme Court, the etheric Supreme Court. You are a leader <laughs> and you are bringing and inspiring the women who aren't quite sure what to do to these experiences. And that's why I'm interviewing you today. It's very important what you're doing, Anouk. And I've loved you since the minute I met you. We've had a lot of fun. Remember the Claremont Hotel? The little macaroon yeah. French cookies. Oh, we both yeah. couldn't afford to be there, but somehow we had the ticket to go. We've done a lot of Divine Feminine events, and we even were uh, gallivanting across southern France looking for a Divine Feminine school, a building to anchor yeah. the lessons and teaching for collaboration, a circle. So um, I always put out, there's always properties out there to consider. So we're looking for a, a heroine uh, to assist the financial and we'll make it work. We'll make it work. We'll ground it so this information and these classes and lessons can get out. But Anouk, um, you're also very grounded in the real world. And I, I just wanted you to describe what hats you are wearing specifically in your service to the planet right now for instance uh tours to sacred places and you give beautiful splendid uh, uh powerpoints about them to entice people france the mysteries the everything she arranges beautifully on small sacred personalized tours and she's obviously has access to communication from the other side and Akashic records and helps people get back on the horse, get on the saddle and hold on and go. So tell us a little bit more about the services that you offer and how people can contact you. Yes, thank you, John. Yes, so at the moment we're not traveling very much, but I, um, um, yes, I, I have brought many wonderful small groups to Iona and um, Ireland, the sacred sites of Ireland and Scotland and of course France, the southern France, the Mary Magdalene France and Paris and Chartres and first we go Wales and Cornwall. So all of the Celtic lands and the mythology that helps us to access our own mythology, our own story of you know unraveling 
the light and the love that we are on planet Earth at this time. And uh, yes, I do past life regressions. I call the session soul journeys. So they are a journey and a regression as well. And it's a way of accessing the wisdom of the soul because it's all it's all within as we know and it's a way of tuning into the subconscious or even the super conscious by being in that uh, relaxed alpha state so yeah what else what else can i say oh yeah so at the moment i'm in i'm in athens so um i will get a little bit more inspiration while i'm here to create something for delphi i am potentially if all goes to plan be doing the the last day so the solstice live from delphi so that would be exciting if i can if i can put the technology together to do that that would be fun to do a live from from the amazing land and um it's known as the umbilical cord of of the world by the ancient ancient greeks so yes this is this is a little bit more what i can i can offer in the now and yes absolutely it's all about being in the body and being human it's all about remembering who we are we come from the stars we came to be humans on planet earth at this time and it's such a powerful time and such an amazing magical time to be alive so absolutely i would i would um bow and honor anyone who is who is carrying their crown right now no matter how how thorny and and messy and, <laughs> and fully apart it might, it might be it's um it's an important time <laughs> It's a very important time. <laughs> I wore this and I was just about to give you your crown. <laughs> ah! <laughs> authority as uh, claiming, uh, claiming even in the best and worst of times that we can pull back these curtains and access and really bring something new. And we absolutely do it better together. I see you. I recognize what you're doing. I honor it. And I welcome other women into your world and your life. And sometimes I think, oh, things are just going to get more dense and crushed. And, and uh, we'll never have that experience of when you took me to that party. And it was a divine feminine famous author and the wine, the gypsy music. I mean, I, lately I've been thinking, will we ever do things like that again? Yes, with our crown, yeah. with massive celebration. Uh, when, yeah. when we first went into this, I said, first, tribunal. What isn't working? Education, ed adjudicators. We will see and help realign things. And then the reckoning. And then jubilation. And what you said, it depends on how fast people move between the reckoning and the jubilation. So the less we stay isolated, we come together, we help the women get their crowns, we come into circles, and we continue the work. The cake gets baked sooner for the big celebration. Absolutely. <laughs> you are the queen I love it. of I wrote it down. <laughs> queen of conscious awareness of unity. No. Yeah. We are in this together. I tell you, it's it's really just about doing it, right? It's about it's about knowing that there is no right and wrong if you're if you're in the truth of the soul. Yes, it's a bigger, more, brighter story coming. Absolutely, and we're all part of this. We're all part of each other. And yes, I, I do my bit, and you do your bit, and together becomes this powerful transformation and this well we are changing i feel like we're changing history you yeah know? oh we are changing the trajectory of human habitation on earth yes absolutely yes, yes. okay now just say how people can reach you that's the one last piece how would you like them to contact you do you have like oh, thank you. Um, my website is um anooksofia.com and I am on 
social media, so Facebook as Anouk Sophia, and yeah, email is anouksophia3 at gmail.com. Excellent. Okay, I'm go getting a ready to go up and press stop recording. Any last words? <laughs> be yourself, ladies. It's a powerful time to be yourself. Just choose to say yes to whatever the soul is asking you to do and and just just come out come out and play with us we're looking forward to um, celebrating you <laughs>